You know what I'm talking about? I ain't tell you to do it yet, and you did it anyway. No, don't sit your butt down. I can't buy good help. Now, you know what I'm saying? He can already messed it up after all. He can probably do it next time. He can probably do a better job than him. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works. Excuse me. But anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest. What does manifest mean? What does manifest mean? <clears throat> that is how these people use it. You, know, you, you just kind of have to manifest. They don't know what they saying. Yeah, they don't know what it mean either. These people that be running their dark mouth, they don't know what it means. What does manifest mean? What do I say? To open up? I say, I say, it is made manifest or made obvious. obvious. So manifest means to make something obvious. Right? Just make it apparent. It makes it, it makes it where you can see it. Make it where it's clear. Right? What, what do I say after that? That you do not believe. That you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongue, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints are in the room. The saints that couldn't make it. The saints, saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might yeah. live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Let's do it. Uh, where we leave off last week? Who remember? Oh, here we go. Where was, where was y'all at? Oh, that's right. I had my emergency. Yeah, y'all couldn't. I wasn't there. You was here, though. He, said, he ain't no good without you, Mel. He ain't, if he can't rely on your notes, he ain't no good. Give me something, TJ. What you got? Okay, well, let me hear it this week with help. Zahar, what? You ain't got nothing, huh? You trying to think. I ain't, I ain't never seen nobody trying to think. You better watch your darn mouth. Huh? Oh, you trying to think and you think you know. Uh, all of a sudden, now you cutting him off because you know all of a sudden. No. Okay. Let me see. Sister Sharon gonna help y'all. We talked about we talked about winning the war against David's son and David mourning. You know what I'm saying? David crying and being sad. That's right, Sister Sharon. She helping y'all out. Hmm. Yeah, that's shimmy eye, right? What is that? Shimmy eye. Yep. Shimmy eye. Good job. What, you... what shimmy eye do at the end? You remember what he did at the end? Wait. You know what I'm saying? After 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 uh Absalom got killed, that David's son name. Remember Absalom? After Absalom got killed, right? How did Absalom get killed? Who remembers? How did he die? Stone? No. Mm. It was a rock and bar. Stone's involved, though. How did Absalom die? Who remembers how Absalom died? Let's see if Sister Sharon got to save y'all butt again. Sister Pamela or somebody. It don't matter what. You just answer the questions. Y'all butt don't pinch. Y'all got it. Uh, we talk about all this stuff. Y'all ain't retain it. What we talking about the week before? Let me just, I mean, just, just say, you threw it out there, so now, uh, let's hear it. I might not remember, honestly. Talking about this dude. This, this dude. dude. This dude. The king. The king. No, Goodness the king. gracious. Right, 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 right. This dude. Yeah, the girl was taking Yeah, she was taking a oh, bath, and then, they had guard down into the and then, while her husband was out at war, and, his husband, <laughs> and she was her pregnant. Husband, she her was husband, pregnant. 
her husband was still out of the war. And then, so, mm-hmm. brother. Okay, that's like, it's still easy to <laughs> you hate her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen. Sister Sharon helped y'all out again. She said, uh, yo, uh, she said, so Sister Sharon said Absalom died because he got his butt stuck in the darn tree. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember he got stuck in the darn tree? Yeah, and then, and then what happened to him after that? How'd he die, though? Oh, he fell down in the tree. Ah. She's no, making no, stuff up. No. Sister Pamela helped y'all out with that one. She said, Joab. Who remembers what Joab did? He in the tree. He stuck. Oh, he tied a rope. Ah. Good boy. He What's tied a rope. He took three arrows. Yeah, he walked he up stabbed, stabbed him. Three times. Right? And he killed him. Right? Because he is at war with him. He is, you know, as a kid said, he was the ox. You know what I'm talking about? He was he the darn ox. Yeah, That's right. That's right. That's right. So, um, so now we're going to pick out. Remember, David was sad about this situation, right? He didn't want his son to die. He told him to actually deal gently with his son, right? So that David was sad about this situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joab and got a little. Let, 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 let him know we didn't say this last week, but David fired Joab. Yeah, David put another gentleman in his Mesa. place. What's his name? I think it's a- yeah, he, t- he put a Mesa in his place. So he put somebody named a Mesa in Joab's place. So that's where we're about to pick up, right? Absalom's gone. Um, after, Absalom, uh, after Absalom died, the people of Israel, some of the people of Israel started to rebel, right? So if y'all remember where we ended yesterday, is the people of Israel started to rebel? Oh, that that's not how we ended, huh? No, 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 no. That's what's about to happen. No. Okay, so let's let's pick Israel, it up. Israel and Judah kind of got into a little beef about bringing David home. Who's gonna bring David home? That's what we. Ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this day about to rebel, and we're about to kind of see how it play out. So this is um, this is um, what verse? What chapter? Hmm. What chapter? 20, chapter twenty. This is uh, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, chapter 20, verse 1. 2 Samuel, chapter 20, verse 1. <laughs> and there happened to be there a man of Belial whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, we have no part in David, neither Look. have we inherited to the son of Jesse. Right. Every man to his tent, O Israel. Right. So the people of Israel is looking like, y'all let all this drama go down. Y'all didn't let us have a part in it? Oh, well, we ain't got no part in it. Then guess what? We ain't got no part in David. In other words, we, you know what I'm saying? David ain't for us and we ain't for David. We split. It. Yeah, because Israel and Judah got through a little beef. Like, we bringing the king over. Mm-hmm. Judah was like, no, he, he from our tribe. We bringing him over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so every man of Israel went up from after David and followed Sheba the son of Bichri, but the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan even to Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in ward and fed them, but went not in unto them. Mm-hmm. So they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days. Right, so this lived. is Amasa. This is the man that he used to replace Joab. So remember, David and Joab got into it uh, in the last in the last uh, last time that we was reading. David and Joab got into it, right? David gave Joab specific orders. You know what I'm saying to deal gently with his son, right? Joab didn't do that. He ended up killing him because he was at war. He had to go to war with his son. And his son was trying to kill Joab and everybody who was with him. So he was like, "Man, yeah, I'm about to kill his boy." So he killed him. David sad about that. Joab got upset that David was sad. Like, this man was trying to kill us, and it seemed like you would prefer that we die than him, him die. Right? So he said, no, nah, you got to bring it together. You go comfort these boys out here that was fighting for you in this war. So David did that. But after David did that, he was like, no, nah, Amasa, I want you to take this spot. So now Amasa got the spot, and now David is about to give him some orders. The first time we see David give him some, some real orders. So he said, look, assemble the men, because he, he sees the play. David sees the play. David is looking like, 
Or old men of Israel just left. David knows what that means. One or two things about to happen. They're about to establish their own king. Or somebody about to take me out so they can take the kingdom. So he just got done with somebody else trying to get the kingdom. Now he got to fight somebody. He, he thinking he got to fight somebody else to, to, to keep them from getting the kingdom. Right? And remember, this was a part of the prophecy. This is why he's so paranoid too. This was a part of the prophecy. The prophecy that the Most High God gave him through the prophet Nathan was what? <clears throat> Who remembers? The sword will never depart from your house. The sword will always be at his house. And when they say the sword will always be at your house, it's always going to be at war. People going to always want to uh, commit violence against your family is what he's saying, right? So there's always going to be somebody who's trying to have some violence against your, your family. Let's see. Keep going. Watch this. Watch what the Mesa do. He said, Mesa, assemble the people in three days. And be here present. Mm -hmm. So Mesa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. Right? So he went to Judah, right? He went to assemble the men of Judah, uh, rather. And then he said, ah, I don't have them in time. Right? So David told him, Three days. Books say he, he took a little bit longer than three days. Right? Watch this. And David said to Abishai, Now shall she, now shall Sheba, the son of Bichri, do to us more harm than Absalom did. Mm -hmm. Take thou thy Lord's servants and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities and escape us. Mm -hmm. And there went out after him Joab's men, and the Carathites, and the Pelathites, and all the mighty men. And they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri. When they were at the great stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before them. And hey, Joab's, can you tell them boys to be quiet down there? And Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loin, and the sheath thereof. As he went forth, it fell out. Right? So now listen. Amasa took too long. So David looking like, man, look. We gonna mess around, and Sheba gonna get a better position on us than Absalom did. Remember, he just went through all this mess with Absalom. So now he's looking like, goodness, great, he's going to mess around and get too far and get an advantage. We got to get him. I told Amazon to get here in three days with all the people. You know what, Joab? Go ahead and handle it. So he told, he told his, his, his men, Amazon was supposed to be over all this. Huh? He said, Abishai. He said, go up. Abishai was with him, but he told all of them. Okay. Yeah, he told, he told all of them. He told, he told his men, they all right there. So Joab, Abishai, and the other brother. No, the other brother dead. No, there's one more, though. No, he died. Got me killed. Or it's a cousin or somebody. Nope. Not that I remember. Yeah, it's one more of them. Um, but the three of them, you know what I'm saying? Or they looking, and they looking like, you know what I'm saying? Let's do it. A mason's supposed to be their commander. He's supposed to go off and get the other men. They waiting there ready. So now... He looking like, all right, just take what we got and y'all go. Right? So Joab looking like, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Abishai looking like, let's get to it. Because they already know how to handle this. So watch what they do. And Joab said to Amasa, are you in health, my brother? Right? So Joab walk up to him. Right? His sword is, is, is latched on to him. But he got it latched loose. Read that part again. Watch this. When they were at the great stone, which is in Gibeon, and Amasa went before them. Uh huh. So Amasa is there. Amasa already trying to get the people together. He already there. He went in front of them. Watch this. And Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins and the sheath. So uh, the, the sword is fastened to him according to his loins, right? So it's fastened right here, right? So he got the sword. You know, you got people right now that carry a pistol, they might put it right here. But the same way he's carrying his sword. He got a sword, but he got it right here. And it's last. You know what I'm saying? So then what happened? And as he went forth, it fell out. All right. So now he's walking up, but it's kind of slipping. It's slipping out. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't making no big deal of it. You know what I'm saying? So it's last. You know how something last, you got to unlatch it to get it out. Oh, it's not last now. It's loose. You know what I'm saying? So it's like slipping out. It fell out. Watch this. And Joab said to Amasa, are you in health, my brother? So he walking up. Amasa in front of him. He woke up. Are you good? You good? You feeling good? You ready? You know what I'm saying? You ready to go to war with these boys? The thing unlatched, right? It's loose, right? Hey, hey, man, you good? Everybody good? You in hell? Watch what he do. 
And Joab took a mesa by the beard with his right hand. And he, took, him. Look, he took him by the beard. You know what I'm saying? The way, you know what I'm saying? It's a manly man. He took him by the beard. And he ain't doing nothing violent. He making it like, man, I love you, boy. You know what I'm saying? And kissed him on the cheek. You know what I'm saying? Mwah, that's my boy. You know what I'm talking about? Watch this. But a mesa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So now, at this point, a mesa ain't paying attention. He was like, yeah, man, I'm good, man. He grabbed by the beard. Oh, that's my boy. Wrap his arms around him. But he ain't paying attention to the fact that Joab's sword is loose. You know what I'm talking about? And guess what? He grabbed him with this hand, but he got the sword in this hand. So when they come close like this, he give him a kiss, but Joab got the thing on him right here. Watch this. But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. Uh huh. So he smote him there with the fifth rib and shed out his Check it to the ground. Quick. And stroke and strike him not again, and he died. He had a one time the book say. He said, Look, he was looking like, oh man, that's my man. Check yeah. it. Smote him in the fifth rib. He said he ain't get him again. It only took one shot. Killed the man. Why would he kill him? You took too long. I'd have never took too long. If, it, if that was, listen, if that commandment would get, you got my position and you failed the king, you don't deserve my position, boy. Break. Yak it. You know what I'm saying? Stabbed him. Killed him. Right? Because that's Joab's mind. Right? That's all he, that's how he deal with his problem. It's like, no, nah, you, op you are opposition to me. You took my position. You're in, that's the position I want. And you took it. Guess what? You the ops. That's just how he thinks. So he kill him. No one fires Joe. Right? <laughs> Keep going. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued after Sheba, the mm -hmm. son of Bichri. And one of Joab's men stood by him and said, he that favors Joab and he that is for David, let him go after Joab. Mm -hmm. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. And when the men saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway into the field and cast a cloth upon him when he saw that everyone that came by him came by him stood still. Mm -hmm. When he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri. Mm -hmm. And he went through all the tribes of Israel to Abel and to Beth Maacah and all the Beerites. They're talking about Sheba, right? So Sheba is the one who told David, like, man, we ain't got no part of you, right? And he he led a small, you know, what they call a mutiny. He, he led a small, a small group of the northern Israelites, right? So they're from the north. David is from the south, right? So he led a small group of the, uh, of the Israelites from the north, our brothers from the north. And he is looking like, man, we ain't got no part of you. And all, they, they, all the ones that was there, they followed Sheba. So now Sheba is going from town to town in Israel trying to rally the troops. He trying to get everybody on his side, right? So watch this. And they came and besieged him in Abel of Beth Maacah. Right? So now Joab caught up with him. They caught him in the city, and the books say he, they besieged him. In other words, surrounded. they surrounded the city, and now they're trying to beat down the walls or the barriers of the city so that they can get inside. Right? Watch this. And they cast up a bank against the city, and it stood in the trench. Uh -huh. And all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Mm -hmm. Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Hear, hear, say I, pray you. Right? So then a wise woman, they say, out of the city, called out. She was like, Hear, hear, say I. Right? So in other words, we're just, I mean, like today's language, you know what I'm saying? Well, she just, whoa, 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 listen to me. Right? She's like, whoa, 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 look, listen to me. I got something to say. Right? Watch this. Unto Joab, come near here that I may speak with you. Come over here so I can talk to you. And when he was come near unto her, the woman said, are you Joab? And he answered, I am he. Mm -hmm. Then she said unto him, hear the words of your handmaid. And All he right. answered, I do hear. Right? So now she's yelling down to him, are you Joab? He's like, yeah, I'm Joab. So Joab is known and he's respected. So she's like, listen, you know what I'm saying? Let, just, just hear me out. He look like, I can hear you. Remember, Joab is a man of war. He looking like, but he, you know what I'm saying? He's not, he's not a completely worthless man. You got to understand that. He is a man of war. So when it's wartime, all things go. But at the same time, he, he, he do acknowledge who God is, right? And he is respectful, right? And the way that you can remember that 
is if you look at when David was going through it with his son at first, who brought him back together? Joab. It was Joab that was watching David like, man, man y'all need to bring this stuff together. Right? So he's not as simple as just like a ruthless I kill anybody type of situation, which is why he's not killing this lady. He don't see this lady as the opposition. He don't see her as somebody fighting in this war. He called out to him. He's like, oh, no, nah, yeah, what's going on? I'm, I mean, I'm in the middle of something right now, but to remember, he's tearing down her city. He's looking like, I'm in the middle of something right now, but go ahead. He's looking like, no, nah, yeah, can you hear me? No, nah, I can hear you. Tell me. Watch what you say. She a wise woman, the book said. Then she spake, saying, they were what to speak in old times, saying, they shall surely ask counsel at Abel. Mm -hmm. And so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Mm -hmm. You seek to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why will you swallow up the inheritance of Yahuwah? And Joab answered and said, far be it. Far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. Right. Joab was looking like, those are not my intentions. <clears throat> Joab was like, I have one mission and it's not to destroy this city. My mission is to get the boy. Right. So what she's telling him is, She's looking like, you an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. Right? And there's a saying going around that you get wise counsel out of Abel. And guess what you're tearing down? Abel. Now, I'm a peaceable woman. He's he, he like, I'm not for all this war. And I'm faithful to the Yahuwah. So she's looking like, why would you tear down a mother and what she's doing is she's planning on herself, right? I'm a woman that could give birth, right? But also she's talking about the city, mm -hmm. right? So this city gives birth to people, right? So why would you tear down a mother in Israel? So Joab is listening to that, and it's like, you're making me sound horrible. You know, that's not even what type of guy I am. So Joab looking like, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm trying to do. Watch what he, Joab is very clear about his objective. Watch what Joab said. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bichri by name. Right? His name is Sheba. You know what I'm saying? Look, that's not, what you just said is not the case at all. Let me tell you what is the case. It's a man, his name is darn Sheba. Watch what Joab tell him. Has lifted up his hand against the king, even mm -hmm. against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. I'll, leave. I'll close this case right now. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm, listen, this will be a done deal. This will be a done deal right now. Just, just, listen, give him to me. Watch what he say. If a woman said unto Joab, behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. So the woman, being wise, Looked at that and she 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 agreed with the judgment. Oh, he rose up against the king. Don't worry about it. We'll throw his head over the wall. She didn't say, hey, you can come in and get him. She said, we'll throw his head over the wall. Why would that be more appropriate? Why wouldn't Joab say, no, nah, let me get him? What is that? What kind of message does that send to Joab if she throw his head over the wall? That they not with all of the they not with this rebellion. They, they not, not with, with it. Right? The problem is that they were starting a rebellion. So if, if he has to beat down the wall, that means the people are protecting him. Right? That's how he would take it. That's how Joab would take it. So now Joab is like, no, 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 no. All this can, what you're talking about is not the case. I have no intentions on tearing down your city. That's just a means to an end for me. You know, I got to tear down the city because I got to get to my objective and y'all holding it up. We can stop this right now. I won't listen. Stop the battery around. Everybody stop. We can shut this thing down right now. You just deliver them over. The woman came back. She looking like that. That's what happened. She probably this is how I like to imagine. She probably looked back. She consulted. That's, that's what he did. That's the full story. Oh no! Listen. No, we gonna have to get him. Hey, we'll throw his head over the wall. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Give me a little bit. We'll throw a head over the wall. Right? For Joab, it's like, okay, well, that shows y'all not protecting them. Which shows that y'all are not a threat. Which shows that we ain't got no problem. Let's see what happens. And the woman went out unto all the people in her wisdom. 
and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab. And he blew a trumpet, and they returned from the city. Every blew man the, to his tent. Blew the trumpet. Stand down. Stand down. You know what I'm about? Stand down. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Pack it up. Got his head, you know, Joab, Joab is sick, you know what I'm saying, he probably grabbing his head, like, look at that, look, he probably kissed him again, Mwah. you know what I'm saying, a good, you know what I'm saying, Joab a sick boy, you know what I'm saying, look at that, let's go, let's take it back, got another one, boy, all right, let's see, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent, they left and the Joab city, Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king, uh-huh, now Joab was over all the host of Israel, mm -hmm. and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Karatites, and over the Pelotites, mm -hmm. and the so the Karatites and the Pelotites, you know what I'm saying? Them is the, you know what I'm saying, the, the, uh, the uh, what's the first one? Karatites. The Karatites. The Karatites, you know what I'm saying, that word means like the destroyers. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, think of it, the Karatites and the Pelotites, think of them as like specialists. You know what I'm saying? They not, think, we talking about soldiers, right? Joab was over everybody. And then my other, what's his name? Benaiah. Benaiah was over these specialists. You know what I'm saying? These boys. He was the one. He was the one that was. Real, real. Yeah, he over these boys that like they like specially. Like Joab a killer and he over everybody. But he over a whole group of Joabs. You know what I'm saying? Like this, like these these are the black ones that's like black ops. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like like Navy SEAL Seal Team Six, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff. The Marine Corps, you know what I'm saying? Special ops, you know what I'm saying? Like like these is the boys. You know what I'm talking? These are the ones. These the one these are the ones, you know what I'm saying? When you need something done and you need it done right. Yeah, send, send the carrots. Send Benaiah real quick. and his crew. You know what I'm saying? We're Benaiah, man. Tell them, you know what I'm saying? Tell them we need a Benaiah. couple. Benaiah. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what happens. And Adoram was over the tribute. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilu, Ahil was recorded. Mm -hmm. And Shiva was scribe. And Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Era also, the Jerite, was a chief ruler about David. So these mm -hmm. are like David's like top dog. Mm-hmm. Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, uh, three years, year after year, and David inquired of Yahuwah. All right, so there's a famine. Everybody hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the ground ain't producing enough food, so people are hungry. People are starving. People are probably dying, right? Because it's a famine. And it's lasting a long time. It's like, okay, I, mean, I can get it last a little six months, but now it's a year. Now it's another year? This thing been going for three years, right? It's a long time to have a family. So now David is looking like, man, look, now we got to talk to God about this. So he inquired of God. And watch what happened. And David inquired of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah answered it. And Yahuwah answered, it is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. Who remembers the Gibeonites? The ones that, was, uh, that, that pretended to be from far away. That's right. So when we, when Joshua took us into the land, we started to terrorize some stuff over there. The Canaanites and all they land, we started to get at their butts. So some of the Canaanites got scared. A subgroup of the Canaanites are called the Gibeonites. Y'all remember the Gibeonites, they came and they came dressed up like they came from far away and they got old molded bread. They came to us and they were looking like, man, we came from this far away land. Why did they tell us that? Why did they have to lie to us and tell us they came from a far away land? Because they knew if they didn't, they would. Because our law told us anybody who lived in the land of Canaan, right, the Canaanites, we had to kill them. It was our law to kill. Them. It wasn't no like we couldn't be like, oh man, you're a cool dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you off. We couldn't do that. Everybody had to die, right? Of the Canaanites. So, knowing that they Canaanites and they were destined to die and they in the land, they had to pretend like, no, nah, we not them. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, we came from this, you know, it's a different, a whole different nation. I can't even think of the name in so long ago. That's how long it took me to get here. Yeah, our people started doing that in this country, slavery time, to try to escape slavery. They did the same thing. That's why sometimes you hear people be like, oh, uh, my great great granddad was full blood Cherokee. And you're like, no, he wasn't, bro. They're black, but you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, they did that in this country too. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll hear, you'll hear, you know what I'm saying? you hear that a lot. You hear, no slave, you know? you hear us talk about, you know what I'm saying, our ancestors with Indians, Native Americans, and all that. And yeah, that's exactly where that comes from because we want to pass ourselves to something else. 
know what I'm saying? Originally, we would want to pass ourselves or something else as a protection for our children. Mm -hmm. Right? If I can if I can convince these people that my child is a Native American and maybe he won't be treated like a Negro. Maybe he won't be whipped all on his back. Right? What they tell you, what they tell you, uh, Mel, with your little project. You remember your little project you were telling me about? What they, you know what I'm saying? You were taking your notes. You don't remember what they what 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 would you take notes on? You don't remember? Uh, yeah. Um something about the brown. Something what? John Brown. Yeah, John Box Brown. You don't remember what he did? Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. And what did he do after that? And then he so so bad. Because many other people tried to do after, but he Right? So so he had to he had to like dislocate his limbs. To fit inside of a box to escape out of slavery. Because his back get wood. These are the lengths that you go to just to escape the torture that it is to be a slave, right? You dislocate your body and fit inside of this box to be shipped somewhere. So he successfully does it. Then guess what? Other people get a hint like, John gone for real? Shoot. You know what I'm saying? I'm being bad. You know what I'm saying? Give me the box. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So they trying to get in the box. And then they try to do it as well, but it ain't successful for everybody. What happened after that? Mm-hmm. That's all. What about the other one? You don't remember the other one? The one that did the revolt? Mm-hmm. The one that started killing folks. You don't remember you don't remember the main one? When he went out, it was like a massacre. Yeah. So, Tell me about him. What happened with him? Um, so he went into this, uh, like really super early in the morning. So, so he went into a city. What city though? Where was it at? South, north? He went up north. He went to a city up north. He didn't have, did he have to do it? Why didn't he have to do it? Huh? Right? Was he a slave? At the time, he wasn't a slave. One might say he's free. But what did he start doing, Mel? Mm hmm. What kind of people he did this to? Huh? Black people or white people? No, it was a black dude. Yeah, that's right. Why did he do that to white folk? Because they had black people as slaves. Not, ne not necessarily some of the white folk that he did it to, but white folks in general had people as slaves. And what did you feel about that, Mel? I thought it was right. Mel was looking like, it was unnecessary. I read her notes. She was like, it was unnecessary for him to do that. Right? And how do you think your teachers and everybody felt about it? It didn't have to happen, right? You know what else didn't have to happen? These people didn't have to put us, as a, put us in chains. They didn't have to whip us on our backs. They didn't have to put us in the position that we had to dislocate our own darn limbs to fit inside of a box to be shipped. Right? One of the things this world does to us, right? They wait until Right. They wait until the, the 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 retribution and the judgment is turned to them. And that's when they get a conscience. Mm -hmm. Right. They get a conscience as soon as as soon. As, listen, we've been whipped and tore up year after year. Even to this day, nobody stops and says, you know what? That should have never happened. That was unnecessary. Instead, they wait until we react to it. And they say, oh, that's reverse racism. That was so unnecessary. We weren't even beating you anymore. Our families got robbed. Who knows what free labor is? We work for free. If I tell, look, if I say Azariah, 
Azariah, you're so pretty, right? So you know what? Because you're so pretty and you're such a sweet little girl, I'm going to give you $7. All you have to do is organize my papers, right? And every time you organize my papers, I'm going to give you $7. Right? Then I tell the hard. I said, man, you nappy head little boy. Get your butt down there and organize my darn papers. I ain't giving your black butt nothing. Right? So now, Zahar's organizing the papers. You get $7 every time that you organize the papers. Who's going to have more money? Okay? So now, what can a person do with money? Goodness gracious. A person can buy clothes. A person can buy shoes. Buy what? Now she is the only one of y'all that got some darn sense. Let me tell you something. I took my baby on a date. And she said if she got a whole bunch of money, she buy a house. She said buy houses. Didn't say nothing about What is house. underneath every house? Um land. Land. <laughs> right? So when you buy a house, you also buy land. So now if Azariah buys a house and Zahar don't even have enough money to buy shirts and shoes. But when he get a little bit of money, guess what he buy? Shirts and shoes. But Azariah went and she bought a house because she got a whole lot of money. Zahar can't even think about buying a house because he ain't got enough money to even afford shirts and darn shoes. So every little money that he happened to scramble up, guess what he bought? Shirts and darn shoes. Cause that's what he need right now. As Ryan, she giving her seven dollars every time she she can buy she buy a house. All right, as Ryan gets older, and she passes down the house to her children. The hard gets older, and he ain't even got shirts and shoes to pass down to his children. Right. So now, the hard's kids are in the same position as he is. They gotta go try to find a job, but people don't want to pay. Him. Meanwhile, Azariah's children have what? They have money and they already have a house. Azariah had to buy a house, didn't she? Do her kids got to buy a house? Oh. So now, they still getting the money that Azariah was getting. But now they don't have to buy a house. But they have enough money to buy another house if they want to. How long do you think it's going to take Azariah's family to have a whole bunch of houses? Not very long. What about the Harris family? Because they still trying to get shirts and shoes. What if the Harris family got to borrow money to start buying shirts and shoes? And what if they have to pass that debt to their kids? And so Zahar keeps going downhill while Azariah keeps going uphill, huh? So you know what they do to us right now? After all of that unfair, that sounds unfair, don't it? After all that unfair, they wake up to us now, you know what they tell us? I didn't enslave you. Why do I owe you money? Right? The Mexican, the Puerto Rican, the, the, the Italian... The, the the El Salvadorian, they all come over here. You know what they say? They choose to come here. This country that benefited from slavery and built up great infrastructure, they love it here because it's way better than their country. They get here and guess what they say? I didn't enslave y'all. Why should I have to pay black people money? Why should I have to pay for reparations? Because you're benefiting off of the economy that we built. Everybody in this darn country benefit off our work. And guess what? We don't get none. I ain't asking none of y'all for a dime. But you keep paying your darn taxes. And USA, give us our money. Because it's only right. We've been stolen from. We've had to pass down debt. While these other people are passing over land. Right? That's why they Even if Zahar family start to make the same mm -hmm. amount of money. As Azariah family, even if he start making seven dollars just like her family making seven dollars, what does her family have already? Houses, 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 land, valuable things, assets, businesses, 
infrastructure, right? She has a social wealth. She's been around people with money. She's made po political friends. People that do favors for her. What does the heart have? Even if he start making $7 just like she making, guess what? Yeah. He's the only one making $7. Everybody he know is in debt and poor. Everybody she know got money. If she, if she happened to know somebody that fell a hard time, they got 17 different people that might help them. Zahar is only one person that can't help 17 different people that all are in debt. It's a different situation. Right? That's why we got to think about it. We got to be, we got to be, we got to be more fair to our people, our own people. We got to understand sometimes people are looking and saying, oh man, these black people are ignorant. They just doing stupid stuff. They out here twerking. They out here doing all this stuff. But we have to think about this. We've come from different situations. That have been intentionally and purposely crafted against us to put us in situations where we react ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what lead is? Like, pencil. Yeah, like pencil lead, yeah. right? You know what lead is, right? So lead is toxic. In fact, with too much lead, it does something to your brain. Anybody ever like pump gas before? You ever pump gas? Yeah. You ever pump gas? You pump gas? You ever read the, the gas? What does it say? It says, it does, it does say some toxic. It says unleaded. Anybody ever heard that unleaded gas? Huh? Got some gas on you? It's called unleaded, right? So all, all the gas that you pump now is called unleaded gas. Back in the day, they used to have leaded gas, right? All the gas had lead in it. Until they found out that lead was toxic to people. So it made people act all crazy. Right, so it's like because mm -mm -mm. everybody had to get gas, white folks and black folks. Right, they're like, mm -mm -mm. take the lead out of there. So now they only give you unleaded gas because they don't want lead in it. But if you look now, and all the worst power parts of just about every town and all over the country, there's places to this day. The most popular right now is like Flint, Michigan, or uh, Missis, uh, Mississippi, where yeah, that water crisis. Happened. Yeah, Jackson, Mississippi, isn't mm -hmm. it Jackson? Yeah, I think it's Jackson. Yeah, I think Jackson, Mississippi. Right, but it's a whole. It's not. Those just the, those just the real popular ones. All over, you got lead all in the ground and lead pipes that have never been replaced. So what they found out that lead does to a person's brain when it's exposed too much, it starts making them act crazy. So like back back in the day, we used to have all these riots and and, and people jumping off and setting stuff on fire and people fighting all the time. Like back, you you look at like y'all grandmas. And 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 y'all great grandmas and great grandpas and all that, they used to fight all the time. They just used to fight. Everybody used to fight a lot. You know what I'm saying? All the time. And part of that was just because of the lead. Right? We was always around so much lead and it made people violent. Right? These people intentionally kept us in situations where there was high lead. And it made us commit crimes and made us more apt to do things. And then you know what they did? After doing that, they made laws to target us because we were committing crimes that they left us in environments and took everything that's good away from us, right? Left the lead, everything that's bad, they left it there. They shipped us drugs, right? Taught us how to use the drugs, how to turn it into crack and how to use it, encouraged us to sell it, and then turned around and gave us higher sentences for selling it. So then they'll present that to you after it's all said and done. They'll present that to you as, well, did he sell crack or not? And of course, we all look at it because we regional people and be like, well, he did sell crack. But they never give us the full story. They never told us about John Box. What's his name? John Box Brown. They never told us that we had to dislocate our own bones to escape our conditions. We had to sell poison to our own people to escape our conditions. Far less to break a law. If I have to break my own bones to escape to escape my conditions, oh, far less to break a law. Mm. Right? Mm. You got to make sure these people give you the whole story. Because they're not going to give it to you. They're going to ask you to judge the situation. They're going to ask you to be on their side. They're going to ask you, look, no. Well, Max, you're, reasonable. you're a reasonable young man. Isn't he a criminal? And the fact is, yeah, he is a criminal. 
But I want the whole story. How did he get there? Where his family come from and where your family come from? Give me the whole story. Because, yeah, he might be a criminal, but is he just a criminal because he want to be a criminal? Or is he a criminal because that's what he saw and that's what he know? And there's a whole bunch of people and it's a whole line of people. And, yes, every black person that's like, hey, do for self and we can do this ourselves and we don't need these white people and all that. You're right. Anybody can stop at any point and be like, nope, I'm going to do something different. But how much easier is it for the person that say just stop and do something different that's already up and got a bunch of houses and already been making seven dollars to organize paper? You know what I'm saying? It's much easier for them to do it than it is for the man that's been out here struggling, been put in hard conditions, and then has been conditioned, right? To live in savagery. Have been intentionally conditioned to live that way and then punished. For the way that they've been conditioned. Mm -hmm. That's a trap. That's a trap. If anybody needs to stop and say, I'm going to do something different, well, it's them folks. Right? Yeah, they, can, they know how to fix the problem. They can solve all of that. It can all be our, solved right now. All our issues. It can be solved right now. The issues that they created, that they blame us for, that, that they're responsible for, they can stop mm -hmm. all of that if they wanted to. Where do we have? Take. It's all killed the Gibeonites. Right? So... So the Gibeonites had to, to be, they had to, to escape their condition, they had to pretend to be another nation. They come to us and they say, hey, we're not Gibeonites, we're something else. Under those conditions, we made an agreement with them that, you know what, y'all will, excuse me, y'all will serve us and we'll have peace with you. We made that agreement before God. We found out that they tricked us. But because we made the agreement before God, we still honored it. So the Gibeonites were supposed to have a place in our land and they were supposed to serve us. It just so happened that the Gibeonites it's dwell. Not like the slavery service, more so like they just had to be our employees. Yeah, they had to work for us. Yeah. So, but we had to, you know what I'm saying? They, we had to treat them just like our people. They're a part of our territories, right? So. The problem is the Gibeonites are in a place called Benjamin. All right. It's a right by the Benjamites, right? Where, where the, the people of Benjamin were. And where was Saul from? Benjamin. So Saul was the king, the king of Benjamin. So Saul apparently started to push these folks out, him and his family. Most high God didn't like that. All right. So let's see what the book says. And the king, it is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he killed the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn to them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore, David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? Mm -hmm. And wherewith shall I make the atonement, that mm -hmm. ye may bless the inheritance of Yahuwah? Mm -hmm. And the Gibeonites said unto him, we will have no silver nor gold of Saul nor of his house. Neither for us shall you kill any man in Israel. And he said, what well, you shall say that will I do for you. And they answered the king, the man that consumed us and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coast of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us. And we will hang them upon unto hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, mm -hmm. between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Ai, whom she bare unto Saul, Armoni and Mephibosheth. And the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Maholathite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gimeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest in the first days and in the beginning of barley harvest. And Rizpah, the daughter of Ea, took sackcloth and spread it, uh, spread it for her upon the rock and from the beginning of harvest until the water dropped them upon them out of heaven and suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day nor the beasts of the field by night and it was told David that Rizpah the daughter of Ai 
the concubine of Saul, what Saul, uh, what Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David and went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the men of Jabesh Gilead, which had stolen them from the street of Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hanged them. And when the Philistines had slain Saul in Gilboa, and he brought up from there the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, and they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, they buried in the country of Benjamin and Zebah in the sepulcher of Kish, his father. And they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God was entreated for the land. All right. So David had to give up some of Saul's family. Many of them were the ones that were, were pushing out the people to begin with. He gave them up. And then after giving them up, the most high God, you know what I'm saying? The most high God was like, all right, for sure. We even now. Stop saying it. All right, let's keep going. Watch this. Now, can you imagine the real judgment got taken on these people for putting us to slavery? Oh, it's coming. It is coming. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, buried. Oh, my bad. I read it. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. And Ish, Ish Benob, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to, thought to have slain David. Mm -hmm. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, secured him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Uh -huh. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, You shall go no more out with us to battle, that you quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. All right, so it's, it's another giant. So another giant, a giant was out there, you know what I'm saying? And David was going to battle with the people. You know what I'm saying? And the giant saw David was like, oh, I'm about to get it. Right? But you know, that make it tough. Because David ain't got it like he, David's a very old man at this point. He ain't got it like he used it's surprising to. surprising that he even on the battlefield fight. Yeah, David just loved a battle, you know what I'm saying? But he ain't got it like he used to. So the people got to protect him. But it's tough when you're in the midst of war and you got to kind of protect. You can't just go like you want to go. You got to make sure he I and make sure you I. Right? So it makes it tough for him. So the, the you know what I'm saying, giant tried to get him. They end up killing the giant. But they're like, no, nah, David, you can't come out no more. Because if you die, the whole light of Israel going to go away. In other words, it's going to make all the other nations feel like we can get him. David, go now. We can get him. So they know that by having David in place, it makes things a lot of easier. People don't have a whole lot of confidence. All right? Keep going. Watch this. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at God. Then Sibachai, the Hushathite, slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again battle in God with the Philistines where Elhanan, the son of Jair, or Egypt, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. Mm -hmm. The staff's whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Mm -hmm. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes. All right, this boy had six fingers and six toes. Twenty-four right. in number. All right, he had twenty-four. How many fingers and toes do you have all together? How many? How many fingers and toes do you have all together? Twenty. What if you had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot? How many would you have? Twenty-one, huh? How many would you have? You would have 24. So he had 24 fingers and toes because he had six on uh, six on each hand and six on each foot. Watch this. Keep going. He this is a giant. This is a big old giant. The form. And he also was born to the giant. Mm -hmm. And when he defiled and when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shemiah, the brother of David, slew him. Mm -hmm. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Right. The one thing I always love, you know, what I'm saying, it was a Christian pastor that pointed this out. You know, what I'm saying, who remembers how many rocks David picked up for Goliath? Four smooth stones, wasn't it? He picked up five, five smooth five. stones. He only used one of them things, but there was four more giants that you know what I'm saying ended up being killed behind him. You know what I'm saying? So you see, it was like you know what I'm saying. Perhaps it was a stone for each of them boys. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Had they been out there that day, he might have got them all. That's what I like to believe. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. 
And David spake unto Yahuwah the words of this song in the day that Yahuwah had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies, mm -hmm. and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. You saved me from violence. I will call on Yahuwah, who is worthy to be praised. Mm -hmm. So shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Mm -hmm. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon Yahuwah and cried to my God. Mm -hmm. And he did hear my voice out of his, out of his temple. Mm -hmm. And my cry did enter into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was angry. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Foes were kindled by it. He bowed, he bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. And he was seen upon the wings of the wind. Mm -hmm. And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared, and found the foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord. At the blast of the breath of his nostrils, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He saved me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me. For they were too strong for me. They prevailed me in the day of my calamity. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands has he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. And as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I also was upright before him and have kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in, in his eyesight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. Mm -hmm. And with the upright man, you will show yourself upright. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the forward, you will show yourself unsavory. And the afflicted people you will save, but your eyes are upon the haughty, thou, thou, that thou may bring them down. For you are my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by you I have run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of Yahuwah is tried. He is a buckler to all that trust in him. For who is God except Yahuwah? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me up on my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. You have also given me the shield of, my, of your salvation, mm -hmm. and your gentleness have made me great. You have enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them. And turn not again until I had consumed them. And I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yes, they are fallen under my feet. For you have girded me with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me have, have you subdued under me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save, even unto Yahuwah, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire of the street and did spread them abroad. You also have delivered me from the stravings of my people. You have kept me to be head of the, of the heathen, a people which I knew not shall serve me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient to me. Mm -hmm. Strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. For Yahuwah lives and blessed be my rock and exalted and exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. It is God that avenges me and that brings me down the people under me. And that brings me forth from my enemies. You also have lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. 
Therefore, I will give thanks unto you, O Yahuwah, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto your name. He is the tower of salvation for his king and shows mercy to his anointed unto David and to his seed forevermore. So David, that whole time, he's singing to God, right? He's talking to God. He don't realize. He think he's talking about himself. He don't realize he ain't talking about himself. He's talking about Yahushua. Right? We look at that with all his description. He's talking about, man, you know, to the righteous, you're going to be righteous. The pure, you're going to show yourself pure. Right? He said, man, you're going to keep the, you're going you gonna to put me above, high above all these people. You're going to cause me to, you're going to cause me to reign over the Gentiles and the strangers. Right? All those things is talking about his son. Yahushua. Right? Because David is going to eventually have a son named Yahushua down his lineage. Right? Not directly. But down his lineage is going to be somebody named Yahushua born. Right? And that's really who he talked about. He don't know it though. He think he's talking about himself. But what he, who he's really talking about is Yahushua. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can get another chapter. Uh, now these be the last me. words of David. David the son of Jesse said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob. What chapter is it? What do you And the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Mm -hmm. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that rules over men must be just, ruling mm -hmm. in the fear of God. That's right. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Mm -hmm. Although my house be not so with God, yet he has made me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all, ordered in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. All right. So now he's what David said is, man, listen, what it take to be a king over God's people, man, you got to be just man. You got to be a righteous man. So he, he go out to describe what it takes. Then he acknowledged, he said, now look, I haven't been that. He said, although my house is not that, most high God still made a covenant with me. Keep going, watch this. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hands. Mm -hmm. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear, and they shall be utterly burnt with fire in the same place. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. Mm -hmm. the, so now we're about to learn about, you know what I'm saying? Just about the document, right? This is, we're getting to the end of David's life right now, right? So now it's just a kind of, you know, kind of recapping and documenting. It's giving you his, some of his last words. And then, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of documenting, you know what I'm saying? The people his that exploits. was around. Him. Yeah, his exploit. You know what I'm saying? Some of the stuff he'd been through. All right, let's see. The Tecmonite that sat in the seat chief among the captains, the same was Adino, the Esnite. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. This, this is telling you, these are the people. So you remember, you know what I'm saying, David say, tell, you know what I'm saying, looking at the young boy, you know what I'm saying, young boy, get his butt. And they kill him. It's starting to tell you about some of the people that's around David. He, he lifted up his spear and he did what? Against 800 whom he slew at one time. This is Adino. There's one person killed 800 people in one go. Right? So this man got a spear. He, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Just knocking people off. They can't do nothing with him. This is a bad boy. Watch this. Keep going. Watch this. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David when they defied, when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave to his sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to spoil. Right. He the books say that he was swinging his sword so long and killing these people so long that he couldn't open his hand no more around his sword. His hand was just stuck there. You know what I'm saying? Like he'd been he had been squeezing his hand. He didn't lost the feeling in his hand to open it back up. It just stuck. His hand stuck like that around his sword. You know what I'm saying? He just, yeah, 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 doing it for so long. It's like, bro, I can't even open my hand. Bro, my sword just, it stuck like that for a minute. 
You know what I'm saying? He had to probably he had to probably rest and set that thing in some ice for it to get loose. You know what I'm saying? Like his hand got a cramp and just stuck that way. That's how many people he is out there killing. These is bad boys that was around. Keep going. Watch this. They had three mighty men. One of the three. And that was um, Eliezer. Mm -hmm. He arose. Oh, wait. And after him was Shemaiah, the son of Agi, the Herarite. And the, Philist and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. Mm -hmm. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. And, and, three, of the 30 she and three of the 30 chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. Mm -hmm. And David was then in a hole. And the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Mm -hmm. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof. He poured it out to Yahuwah. And he said, be it far from me, O Yahuwah, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went to in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things, these three mighty men did. You know how mad I'd be? Yeah, like, bro, three yeah. of us broke yeah. through a whole army to get you some water. It's like you can't just be saying stuff off the cuff like that. <laughs> we about that. You know what I'm saying? And we brought you it back. You said we gonna do it. it? Yeah, wow, I lost it. Like we just fought like 500 people, just us three, to bring you this water. You ain't gonna drink. Okay. <laughs> and Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among the three, and he lift up his spear against 300 and slew them, and had the name among the three. Was he not the most honorable of three? Therefore, he was their captain. Howbeit, he attained not unto the first three. All right, so Abijah was a bad. We already know Abijah was a bad boy. That's Joab, brother. Right? We already know he a bad boy. But the book is saying he wasn't even messing with these other boys. Yeah, he wasn't even the, the top three. You know what I'm saying? That boy, look, he's a bad boy too. He wasn't even, he wasn't even up there with these other boys. These other boys, like David ran with the ones. Like he that they was them. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't do nothing with these boys. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabziel. So you remember we just done, talked about Benaiah. Benaiah, who was he over? Black Ops. He is over that Black Ops squad, right? He is over the, you know what I'm saying, still team six. You know what I'm saying? The spies. Them boys, you know what I'm saying, just trained assassins. You know what I'm saying? The Kiratites. Them boys, the, the name of Kiratite means like the destroyers. You know what I'm saying? Like them boys, they get the job done. Just put it like that. Whatever you need, don't worry about it. It's done. The just send the, the money. You know what I'm talking about? Just send the money. It's done. Don't even worry about it. Keep going. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabziel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down and also slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. Mm -hmm. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and had the name among the three mighty men. He was more honorable than the 30, but he attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. Mm -hmm. And Asahel, the brother of Joab, was one of the 30. But that was the one that Abner killed. Mm -hmm. Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Shema, the Horodite. Elika, the Horodite. Elez, the Paltite. Era, the son of Ekesh, the Tekoite. Ebaezer, the Anethalite. Mebunai, the Hushathite, Zalman, the Ahoite, Mahorai, Mahorai the, Nef, the Netophathite, Heleb, the son of Bunna, a, Net, a Netophathite, Hittai, the son of Ribai, out of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Benea, the Pirahonite, Hidai, of the brooks of Gash, Abiabon, and the Abarahite, Asmaveth, the Behurumite, El Elihaba, the Shalonathite of the sons of Jason and Jonathan, Sh Shema, 
the Herahite, Aham, the son of Sharar, uh, the Horite, Eliphalet, the son of Ashbi, the son of Makut, the son of the Makathite, Eliam, the son of Ahithophel, uh, the Gilanite, Hezri, the Carmelite, Peeri, the Arbite, Egal, the son of Nathan, of Zobah, Benai, the Gidite, Zelik, the, Ammon, the Ammonite, Nahari, the Berathite, armor bearer of Joab, the son of Zeruai, Ira, an Ithrite, Gareb, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, 30 men, 30 and 7 in all. Uriah was the one that David had killed. All right, Uriah was the one that David had killed, right? And he was uh, part of the 30. He was part of the bad boys, too. So remember, that's why that's why Uriah was like, nah, man, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going home by my boy. Because all these men that we naming, these are the ones that's like, they with the function. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever is clever, let's do it if it's war. You know what I'm saying? These were the top guys. So you remember we was in the book of Judges? And you remember every now and again, the people would kind of be, you know what I'm saying, subjected to, you know what I'm saying, almost being made slaves. And then there would be a judge that rise up and they rescue. He the judge to rescue and they kill somebody or kill you know a bunch of the Philistines or <laughs> the Ammonites or whoever it might be, right? So imagine those judges that was, that grew and they were strong enough to actually take out a lot of the Philistines. Just imagine it's thirty of them at one time surrounded by David, right? The Most High God gave David thirty of them more. They could probably take out nations by their own self. You know what I'm saying? That's they Samuel. He had a bunch of Samuels, a bunch of um, Gideons, Gideons, you know what I'm saying? A bunch of Ehuds, you know what I'm saying? Like he 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 had a bunch of the judges around him, right? And that's how the most, so that's how David ended up being so successful, right? When we kind of look at it, David was, a, first of all, David was a bad boy himself. So David by himself a bad boy, but he attracted other ones because he understood war, but he was also a righteous, fair person. So it's like, oh, man, I rock with this dude. And he got the scraps. So people respect him on a different level. They respect him because it's like, man, you really out here. But also, you ain't like most of the people that's really out here. He become king. It's like, well, no, nah, there's somebody I respect. So he people gravitated to him. These type of people, right? The, the killers, right? The killers gravitated to him and surrounded him and protected him. So it's like, no matter what, even to his dying day, you can see that if somebody after, they're like, man, no, 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 that's not happening. They go kill these giants for him because it's like, nah, we're not letting David go down. That's our king. Right? You remember Saul? In certain situations, Saul tells somebody to do something, they be like, nah, we're not doing it. Saul tells them to kill a priest, they're like, no, nah, we're not doing that. That causes division. When you got a king that you don't trust their judgment, that causes a division. They don't have that problem with David. With David, it's like, man, everything David say be on point. Everything David do be on point. And that boy with the scraps. So it's just all respect. So you attract all of the top killers, all of the top guys, right? And that's what that's his protection. That's how David, you know, that's how David had so much success. That's part of the reason why he had so much success. Keep going. That's it? That's the last of that chapter? Mm -hmm. Where are we at? 24? Yeah. 24 start with uh, the census. All right, we'll 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 say that one for next. Because I want to get into Chronicles. You know what I'm saying? We can we can jump over into Chronicles. Um, and we'll talk about that one next. Any questions? All right, That's let's right. pray out. I forgot. Chronicles do detail like some of Samuel also. 